Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you, of all of you, please invite your friends and I apologize my voice is kind of tired for laughing a lot. Uh, you know, today, uh, a few hours ago, we made a video, I don't know how many of you watch it, please uh, go watch it before we take it down. Actually, uh, it's going to be taken down very soon, so you better watch it from other channels which they are subscribing. Before we start, <clears throat> somebody posted a comment saying, that there's some Christians who they are downloading my videos and posting it in their channels. If somebody take the video and download it in another channel, they do flag it, flag it for copyright. Let me make it clear. Nobody have copyright over my videos. So anyone will flag it. Please take a screenshot for the one who flag your video. Send it to me and I will flag him too. As simple as that. When I say my videos for everybody, it's me for everybody. You don't own it it doesn't belong to you and the point of giving it out so everybody can see it who are you so if anyone you know he is doing that flagging Christian videos claiming copyright over them give me his name his account in YouTube I will flag him and we will expose him <clears throat> now uh, uh, in the morning we play a video of mr. Samir Abdullah or Abdullah Samir who is an ex-muslim just to refresh your memory uh, uh, Abdullah Samir is an ex-Muslim. Actually, we have uh, me and him in conversation before. He's an atheist. We don't agree with many things, including his belief as an atheist. Uh, but this gentleman, you know, he have his opinion and his way to expose the cult of Muhammad. And remember that uh, uh, Abdullah Samir, he was a person trying to convert people into Islam. And when he started doing what it's called dawah, which means like missionary, he found that Islam is a garbage. So he decided to leave the cult of Muhammad. And he was watching uh, the videos of Yasser Kadri and the kid, uh, uh, the well-known kid, Mimi Hijab. Uh, I mean, the video editor, previously his name was Muhammad Hijab. Uh, now his name is the video editor, everybody knows him. So he was watching him and he made a short video exposing the stupidity of this idiot. We will remind you about it and then we will go to our topic. Stranger to controversy. Being the ac Yasir Qadi is no stranger to controversy. Being the academic, he has sometimes <coughs> ruffled feathers with comments he has made on different issues. This time, even worse than before. He said something now, again, that shook the ground or pulled the rug below the Dawa guy's feet. So much so that Muhammad Hijab took the drastic step of deleting the last 30 minutes of his interview from the point Yasakadi started talking about, guess what? Quran preservation. All right, so uh, Yasir uh, Qadi, he had an interview and he edited his video and he took 30 minutes from his video. At least he took 30 minutes from his video. From my video, he took the whole video off. He took only two seconds. Uh, is my voice good, guys? Is the sound of the video is coming good? Somebody said the sound is not good. I think because you are using a gadget is not made by Allah. You know? Uh, so let us see here what we will find out. You know, Mimi Hijab is just a kid. And actually, I'm not talking about him. But I'm going to give you an example. If this is a person who Muslim think he can defend Islam, so what Islam is? If this is a person, the Muslim they think he is the one who can defend Islam. So what is Islam? What this Islam is? I will give you as a, 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 a sample of what we are talking about, and you be the judge. This is from the debate between Mimi Hijab, aka, I mean the video editor previously his name Muhammad Hijab. I don't know why he changed his name from Mimi Hijab to the video editor, but I think he earned it. So in this video here, uh, we will see a part of a, what is called debate. And you will notice when you debate Muslims, you don't really debate. It's just a joke. Listen carefully, laugh and enjoy. Jesus Christ was no son of God or God, or, but he was the Messiah. He was a prophet. He didn't break the long chain of prophets that came before him. That's where we disagree with the Christian. Now, does that make sense? And would you say that now, believing in one God and his essence, <laughs> the raps are cutting too. <laughs> the rhymes are not as good. It's something you could 
subscribe to. Well, he can't rap, but he sure can beatbox. More on that later. Muslims often accuse Christians of going to an excess in their religion for rendering unto Jesus the worship that's due to God. The impetus for this claim comes from Surah 4, 171 of the Quran, which says, O people of the book, commit no excess in your religion, nor say of Allah anything but the truth. Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah. The validity of this charge of going to an excess is predicated on the assumption that Jesus is not God incarnate, something that Christians, as the people of the book, confess on the basis of divine authority. Apart from this erroneous assumption, the Quranic argument falls to the ground. Interestingly enough, while this doesn't work as an argument against Christianity, it can easily be turned against Muslims, whose attitude and rank fetishism towards their false prophet goes well beyond that which is due to any creature. Case in point. When Allah's messenger cleared his throat of some secretion, <laughs> some of his companions would take it on the palm of their hands <laughs> and rub it on their face and skin. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, brother. This was the level of love of the companion. <laughs> this point was recently made by David in his debate. Wait, with... wait, hold on. I want to I wanna see this again. I mean, this is, was the love of the companion. The love of the companion. If to take the spit and the, and the germs and the boogers of your prophet and to wipe it in your face. And do you see the face of this devil? I mean, you we Christians, we worship Jesus as God. Have you ever heard of such a thing? Those people, they say Muhammad is just a prophet. Look how in a second he turned into a devil. He looked like a human being. The second we start speaking about spitting, boogers, coming from the mouth and the nose of Muhammad, it's like he's talking about cake. What cake? It's all more, even more lovely. Tell us, uh, brother, Sheikh, uh, tell us, please. It's in point. When Allah's messenger cleared his throat of some secretion, One day I will die laughing with heart attack from laughing. For, he cleaned his throat from what? Cleared his throat of some secretion. Some of his companions would take it on the palm of their hands and rub it on their face and skin. This was the level of love of the companions. This point was recently made by David in his debate with Muslim apologist and self-styled academic researcher Muhammad Hijab. Islam deifies Muhammad. When Muhammad would spit, his companions would rush to collect the spit and they would rub it on their faces. They would struggle to, ha to save his used ablution water. If a hair fell off his head, they would rush to grab it. After the Battle of Uhud, Muhammad's companions, men named Malik, collected the blood that ran from Muhammad's wound and drank it. Muhammad said, the fire will never touch you. Yo. This isn't how you treat someone you regard as a mere human being. Rather than respond to what David actually argued, Muhammad Hijab resorted to childish antics and chest-thumping rhetoric, hoping to beguile the mostly Muslim audience. And then he says that the Prophet, they, they played, you know, they tried to get his hair and the spit and these things. Okay, well, if you think spitting on someone makes you a god, well, that's what it implies. And I wonder why you look at every other verse of the Bible as implying that Jesus was God, because for you, a spit, that's, that's making me a god now. <laughs> and look, the Muslims are laughing. I mean, the stupidity is amazing. The guy, he did not ask you that he is not saying that the spit make him God. He's asking you why you treat his spit as God. You stupid idiot. So in order to avoid the embarrassment, they made the mockery, but the fact they made mockery of themselves for they are a bunch of kids 
low class trashy street boys no level of education no respect not to their profit not to the question not to the debate not to the audience he did not ask you he did not say the spit make you make you god you idiot donkey son of a three night stand as your prophet said tataraka ya tataraka muta the question was why you muslims fight over his spit over his boogers over his piss over you drink his piss you drink you drunk his blood this is the question what is the answer no answer say again say again and they would rub it on their faces they would struggle to ha to save his used ablution water if a hair fell off his head they would rush to grab it after the battle of uhud the muhammad's companions men named malik collected the blood that ran from muhammad's wound and drank it muhammad said the fire will never touch you sure will not touch him this isn't how you treat someone you regard as a mere human being Rather than respond to what David actually argued, Muhammad Hijab resorted to childish antics and chest-thumping rhetoric, hoping to beguile the mostly Muslim audience. And then he says that the Prophet, they, they played, you know, they tried to get his hair and the spit and these things. Okay, well, if you think spitting on someone makes you a god, well, that's what it implies. And I wonder why you look at every other verse of the Bible as implying that Jesus was God. Because for you, a spit... That's, that's making me a god now. <laughs> I mean, don't embarrass yourself in front of me. <laughs> and the funny, the idiot, who his supporter, they are laughing too. <laughs> they are laughing. You know, this guy, Instead of saying to him, you idiot, shouldn't you answer the question and the challenge? What is the answer? So this is why the Muslim, they thought that, that this guy, he won the debate with David Wood by doing this. What is the answer? Until now, we are waiting for the answer. <laughs> and I like this Anthony because at the end, Anthony does something very nice. Judging from the reaction of the audience, many Muslims were taken in by hijab's hijinks and didn't realize that his bombast was diverting them from the real issue, which David came back to in his rebuttal. Seventh, I said that Islam deifies Muhammad. Uh, said, well, you know, Muhammad spitting and stuff doesn't, what's that got to do with him being God? That's not, that's not the point. The point was, Muhammad's just a man, the Muhammad's just a man. Donkey, donkey, son of three night stands. The video editor, Aka, the previously known as Muhammad Hijab. Do you see what the point? I mean, do he need to spank you twice on the stage? And you think you are the one who did finish him? How embarrassing. And this is how they gang, you know, they try to make mockery of you. They laugh at anything you say, so they will make you feel like, oh, okay, maybe I'm losing. Intimidation. But the fact... We are laughing at you. Anyone have little brain, you will see that you Muslims have no answer. And we are trying to avoid the answer and the question. So now he have to repeat to you twice because you are a certified donkey. What is the point? The point is not the spit, you donkey. The point is why you are rubbing the spit of a normal man in your face. So what if he's a prophet? Why you are drinking his urine? And how a drink in your, his urine will save you from hellfire? His holy urine? ...were taken in by hijab's hijinks and didn't realize that his bombast was diverting them from the real issue, which David came back to in his rebuttal. Seventh, I said that Islam deifies Muhammad. Uh, said, well, you know, Muhammad spitting and stuff doesn't, what's that got to do with him being God? That's not, that's not the point. The point was, Muhammad's just a man. The Muhammad's just a man. Muhammad's just a man. And then you see... Uh, 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 David, you need to say it more. This guy is not listening. What, what? Muhammad is what? Well, you know, Muhammad spitting and stuff doesn't, what's that got to do with him being God? That's not, that's not the point. The point was, Muhammad's just a man. The Muhammad's just a man. Muhammad's just a man. And then you see how his followers acted towards him, and it's clear he was much more than a man to him. 
when a normal human being is walking down the street and spits, you don't say, ooh, I have to rub this all over my body. Muhammad's companions did. If a hair falls off a normal human being's head, you don't say, ooh, I need to grab this. I need to save this. If someone is bleeding, a normal human being is bleeding, you don't say, hey, let me get that running blood and drink it. This was acceptable behavior from Muhammad and his followers. And how, if you saw anyone doing this, if I said, hey, there's this place somewhere in South America or something, and they've got this guy down there, and whenever he spits, they rub it on their faces. Whenever he washes himself, they collect the water so they can rub it on themselves. Whenever he bleeds, he gets cut, they drink it. You say, ah, oh, look at this idolatry, look at this paganism. But that's exactly how Muhammad expected his followers to act. And for some reason, whenever it's in Islam, it's still just pure monotheism. While David's level-headed response was more than adequate to expose the fact that Islam is a religion of excess toward a mere human being, it seemed to me that another response may be in order. I thought to myself, since Muhammad Hijab likes spitting so much, maybe I would spit a little something in his honor. If I only had a beat, and then it hit me. My name's Muhammad Hijab. I cannot debate. That's why I beat my chest like a great ape. I yell, hoop and holler, hoping you won't see. I'm dropping logic blunders like bananas from a tree. With God, I refute claims that David didn't make. That's called a straw man, and I'm called a snake. He said we treat our prophet like a demigod. Some bathed in his spit while others drank his blood. His words I could not handle, his words I had to twist. I said, no one's a god just because they have to spit. Now I feel extremely silly, moving like a pigeon. More embarrassing than that? excess in my religion. This is why it's fitting my last name is Hijab, because I'm so embarrassed I should wear a niqab. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one from Anthony, isn't it? <laughs> Perfectly done, perfectly, perfect, perfect. It's good in the music too, I don't know that. So, you know, like, I mean, they think by making mockery, and this is the whole point. You see, the Muslim, they say to him, why you don't debate Christian prince? So what he would do, he cannot debate Christian prince. So he go and he say, Christian prince, he said to a Muslim woman, sucker me. I was quoting your prophet. A Muslim woman, she posted in the chat, as she's saying, you said to her, show me your boobs. Well, she will suck on me. <laughs> so you are upset from showing showing your boobs, but you are not upset from your prophet asking you to give me your boobs. I mean, you see the hypocrisy of those Muhammadan. They are upset for me quoting what their prophet said, what their prophet ordered them to do. The second you quote what they teach, you are sexual predator. A follower of a six years old child molester. They are calling me sexual predator. For what? For reading Muhammad. Did you ask yourself why we are even talking about boobs? It's your prophet. What kind of a prophet he order Muslim women to give their boobs to adult? You can search right now in Google about the fatwas in the year in, in the 2020, 2019, 2018, 2017 that Muslims approving breast feeding for adult, it is halal. So if you have dignity and you don't really want anyone to say show your boobs well why you don't leave islam and say to muhammad shame on you because how you would do suckering without showing your boobs hmm? it is suckering suck ling not drinking as some muslim they say to you oh we drink milk from their boobs what do you think their boobs they have a faucet Women don't have milk all the time, you idiot. They are not, even God don't have milk all the time. So you ask them a question, they try to go around it. They try to put you down. They go up, down, side, all, all the way. The point is never answer. And by doing that, they think they are victorious. And then people, they start reading and watching and comparing and they will laugh. Maybe you laugh in the moment and you thought that you've been victorious. But here we go. The, what is called debate, which is nothing but a mockery, 
happened more than a year ago and until now we are enjoying every single moment of it <laughs> you know the muslim they say uh, how you say it uh, like okay how you say such a language like what uh, would you take off your panty well your prophet he says muslim women take off your panty and get paid why you Muslim get hurt for saying what your prophet said I mean it's very embarrassing that as long as you are quoting what Jesus said nobody can complain it's a holy teaching the second you quote what Muhammad the filthy said the Muslim themselves they call you names you cannot quote what Muhammad said you cannot if you call or you quote what Muhammad said then you are a bad person you tell me what does that mean when somebody says to you that you as a Muslim woman you can go and rent yourself and the man he can pay you for renting you what is that renting what exactly when he paid the money what will happen what is next you will take off your panty why you get upset from me saying the language as it is? Why they have no honesty? Isn't it? This is, this is what it's about? Taking off your panty? When you Muslim, you teach in your mosque that the whole point is renting the women a private part. Renting it. And not only that, you publish articles and, and studies. And with no shame, you say, well, women, she is doing the practice of Islam. She is renting herself. So why when we say certain words to you, which is fit perfectly with what you believe in, you accuse us of what you have. So look what they do. They are the one who have it, and we are the one who accuse with it. Why? Because we caught it. How this is can be from God? If we ask Mimi Hijab about Muta, he was saying to me, uh, did you say to the woman, suckle me? Your prophet says, suckle me. Suckle him. I just said, suckle me. Suckle him. He was talking about me, isn't he? <laughs> what kind of religion this religion is? They are case sensitive. You cannot tell us what the prophet said, for this is will hurt us. You cannot say to a Muslim woman, you are rented. We can say it, you cannot. This is a Muslim website. And they are teaching us about what the Muslim women value in Islam. What her job exactly. Temporary marriage. And what is the purpose of it? In some work, a special term is applied to women who precipitate in the muta, musta'adara, or rented women. Take off your panty. What's your business? Take off your panty. Record me, cut my voice, post it everywhere, and let us die laughing at your hypocrisy and video editing. This is the truth. This is a prophet of God who is coming to teach you ethic. And he is saying to your Muslim sister, daughter, or mother, go and take off your panty and get paid. Why are you upset? You are upset for me quoting it, but you are upset of your prophet saying it and teaching it and ordering it and you practice it. Muta is a kind consider of rental because in general man basic aim is the, of this kind of marriage is sexual enjoyment of the women. Take off your panty. You see, I'm trying to be actually more polite. I did not say the purpose of this sexual enjoyment. I said, take off your panty. Why you get upset? When your prophet, he says, show your boobs. How come he can say it? I cannot say it. And for sure, everybody knows we are speaking that in public forum debate. There's no cameras. I don't see the women. She don't see me. So everybody knows I am caught in Islam. And we are debating about Islam. So why you are trying to make it as if I am asking the women to show me her boobs? Shame on you. Filthy people. Filthy, disgusting people. The same here. In this stage. 
the question about Muhammad. And they always divert the topic. And when even their own scholar, he gave them an answer they don't like, they do video editing for him. As we showed you, this is the page of Yasser Qadri. And the video he is here is one hour, 45 minutes, literally. One hour, 45 minutes. In Mimi Hijab, previously known as Mimi Hijab, today known as the video editor, the video is one hour, 16 minutes. So, when you are a person of a scam, scam is what you do, because this is nothing but a scam. And not only you do scam, but you are stupid, because what the point of you shorting the video, but the original video is there. I mean, you are fooling who? And now everybody is laughing at you, and you lost your name as Mimi Hijab, which is a guy who gave, gave it to you as a gift from me. Now people, they are calling you the video editor. So now which one you do? I mean, isn't it Mimi Hijab was better? Be honest with me, Mimi Burka. So Mimi Burka, he tried to put a Burka in everything in order to cover. But the more he tried to cover, the more we love. The same as happened now with his with, with David. When he's debating with David, I mean, look at you. You became the joke. People making rap music about your stupidity. How embarrassing. Until now, we are waiting for the Muslim to answer the question which Mimi, Fufu, Sisu, Susu, or uh, the video editor, previously known as Mimi Hijab, why you Muslims were collecting the boogers of Muhammad and why you are wiping your face with his spit and why you are drinking his urine and why you are drinking his blood who is this Muhammad it's a question they will never answer so what they will do they will use the strategic strategic plan of burqa video editing or no answer or mockery what do you want to do mockery we do mockery so here we go we are laughing show me your boobs <laughs> you know, by the way, when Muhammad Hijab, okay, sorry, previously known as Muhammad Hijab, the video editor, when he was doing this, was he showing the boobs? Because this is boobs. Is that, is that what you have? We speak to your brain, you answer by spitting. What is that? Or maybe he's showing his panty. This is his panty. So he tried to avoid the answer by uh, di redirecting the question to different direction. And actually, I like Anthony, the way he uh, uh, he show people, who, especially the naive ones, how silly, how stupid. But you know, there's a difference between me and between Anthony and David. They are very polite. I am not. I'm not polite. I cannot be polite with followers of the devil. Sorry, I cannot be polite with the devil. I cannot. Uh, so what? Uh, what here? Uh, 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 Fifi, Mimi, uh, Siso said. Let us see. Audience. And then he says that the prophet, they, they played, you know, they tried to get his hair and the spit and these things. Okay, well, if you think spitting on someone makes you a god, well, that's what it implies. And I wonder why you look at every other verse of the Bible as implying that Jesus was God. Because for you, a spit, that's, that's making me a god now. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> actually, this love alone make me laugh. <laughs> you know, it's like a prostitute in the corner of a street, and the guy he did not agree with her, and she get upset because he will not take her home. She laughed loudly, supposedly she's insulting the guy, so everybody will know that he was talking to her, the same as her prophet, the prophet Muhammad, who is the prostitute prophet, who made the verses in the Quran, by the way giving permission for Muslim to do prostitution. Do you know that in Islam there is no punishment for prostitution? Do you know that the Muslims, they were launching 
pimp house in the time of Muhammad and Muhammad he made clear verse about it force not your girls to do prostitution which girls we're talking about slave girls if they choose a chastity if they choose they are slaves and if you force them Allah is all merciful what is the punishment there is no punishment Where is, why you don't make a verse says it's haram? How come Muhammad, he have time to say it's haram to put perfume, but he have no time to say it's haram to do prostitution? Instead, he promote prostitution because we just showed you Muslim, they rent women. Muslim women is rented. And who is the one using the word rented? It's not a Christian prince. Because later they will say, see Christian prince, he is saying Muslim women rented. It's not me saying that, read it. This is what? This is their Islamic website and the ones are explaining is their scholars. Rented women. And what is the definition of rental? It is gain, it is to gain possession of benefit in exchange for a specific sum. <laughs> I mean, look how much dignity they have. And now, the question still remain. Mimi could not answer it. Fifi could not answer it. Susu could not answer it. Who is going to answer it? Who is the Muslim who have the answer for the question? Why you Muslims were collecting the poop? Do you know guys that the Muslims, they have in their books, claim that when Muhammad, he do poo, poo the ground, the earth, open its mouth and swallow it. And nothing left there but perfume. You believe it? Do you believe it? And yet they say to us that Muhammad is just a man. He's a prophet. He's not God for us. I mean, why his poop? I mean, what's wrong if the earth did not swallow the poop of the prophet? Why his poop is special? Any Muslim can tell us. What is special about his poop? And why if you drink the camel, sorry, the urine of the prophet, which is camel urine, the fire of hell will not touch you. Is that a holy piss? Even the piss is holy for you? And you are talking about paganism? And you are talking about man worshipping. So David would ask in a serious question, what is the answer? And then now not even one of them dare to answer. For they have no answer. It's embarrassing. And the only way is to make a mockery for a person, a gentleman who is very polite. His name is David Wood. The fault of David Wood in this debate, he is very polite. Those people don't understand language of polite. Street people. You have to go down to their level. You have to get dirty. This is always happen when you deal with the garbage. You will get dirty. No matter how many uniform you wear, they will make you get dirty. And this is why we deal with dirt every day. You know, sometimes I feel like I am the guy who collect garbage every day from the street. Is that the garbage of Muhammad and his teaching? And it's embarrassing. Filthy. And they say to you, why you speak such a language? I'm reading Islam, my friend. Islam is a bad language. Islam is bad. Muhammad is filthy. Don't you get it? So as long as we are talking about a filthy sex maniac, child molester, sex offender, killer, what the topic will be? A person who go to an infant house, she is a baby, a child, drinking milk. And he say, when she get older, I'm going to have her in my bed. This is Muhammad. A person who forces a child, she is six years old, to be in his bed. A person who advises his men, why you want to marry a widow? Why you don't marry a little tiny child so she can sport with you? And you can sport with her. This is how sick he is. And by the way, this is exactly what pedophiles are about. They have a special joy with the children. Sport with her. Did I say that? The Muslim now, they will cut the video and they will say, Christian Prince, he said to Muslim women, children, sport with her. I, I did not say that. I am quoting your prophet. Cowards. 
and this is the hayat in the front of us. Let us find it. Yeah, because later they will edit the video and they will say, see? Hmm? Talking about children, huh? see? They will, huh? See? Uh -huh. <laughs> he said to Jaber, hey Jaber, did you marry a, 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 a virgin or a previously married? <laughs> the guy, he said, no, a previously married. Muhammad, he says to him, why? Why you idiot? Why you idiot? Why you don't go and have sex with little young girl? How young? Later you will find out that she is a child because this man explained he needed the women to take care of the children of his son, his, his, his own brother who died fighting for Muhammad. He said to him, well, the reason I cannot marry a young girl, which is a child, as you see here, that my brother he died and he left nine or seven daughters look how many you don't even know how many therefore i did not approve the idea that i should bring a girl like them do you see what we are talking about a girl like them child molester sex offender Muhammad, the pretender, the prophet prophet, the booty prophet. I mean, what is left about this guy is not wrong. What kind of a man, anyway, he go to a married man, he says to him, why you don't go and marry little child? What's your business? You're filthy. But he's filthy. So why Muhammad did marry Khadija then? If he, this is the advice for Muslim men, so and what the purpose of this marriage? So you could sport with her. Look at the wisdom, man. What is the purpose of what they call so-called marriage? Sport. What sport? Put a file. Sporting with a child? What does that mean? Play. They have a special sexual joy those pedophiles and this pedophile is teaching others to be pedophile like him i'm not going to keep you long and this is not the time really we go live on air but don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like what we do and if you don't like what we do don't forget to unsubscribe that's my advice now uh, just one more reminder of what happened there. Why you collect the spit of Muhammad and put it in your face? And what is the answer? Hoping to beguile the mostly Muslim <coughs> audience. And then he says that the prophets, they, they played, you know, they tried to get his hair and the spit and these things. Okay, well, if you think spitting on someone makes you a god, well, that's what it implies. And I wonder why you look at every other verse of the Bible as implying that Jesus was God. Because for you, a spit, that's, that's making me a god now. <laughs> I mean, don't embarrass yourself in front of me. Judging from the reaction of the audience, many Muslims were taken in by hijab's hijinks and didn't realize that his bombast was diverting them from the real issue, which David came back to in his rebuttal. Seventh, I said that Islam deifies Muhammad. Uh, said, well, you know, Muhammad spitting and stuff doesn't, what's that got to do with him being God? That's not, that's not the point. The point was, Muhammad's just a man, the Muhammad's just a man, Muhammad's just a man. And then you see how his followers acted towards him and it's clear he was much more than a man to him. When a normal human being is walking down the street and spits, you don't say, ooh, I have to rub this all over my body. Muhammad's companions did. If a hair falls off a normal human being's head, you don't say, ooh, I need to grab this. I need to save this. If someone is bleeding, a normal human being is bleeding, you don't say, hey, let me get that running blood and drink it. This was acceptable behavior from Muhammad and his followers. And how, if you saw anyone doing this, if I said, hey, there's this place somewhere in South America or something, and they've got this guy down there, and whenever he 
spits, they rub it on their faces. Whenever he washes himself, they collect the water so they can rub it on themselves. Whenever he bleeds, he gets cut, they drink it. You say, ah, oh, look at this idolatry, look at this paganism. But that's exactly how Muhammad expected his followers to act. And for some reason, whenever it's in Islam, it's still just pure monotheism. While David's level-headed response was more than adequate to expose the fact that Islam is a religion of excess toward a mere human being, it seemed to me that another response may be in order. I thought to myself, since Muhammad Hijab likes spitting so much, maybe I would spit a little something in his honor. If I only had a beat, and then it hit me. <laughs> My name's Muhammad Hijab, I cannot debate, that's why I beat my chest like a great ape. I yell, hoop and holler, hoping you won't see, I'm dropping logic blunders like bananas from a tree. With God I refute claims that David didn't make, that's called a straw man and I'm called a snake. He said we treat our prophet like a demigod, some bathed in his spit while others drank his blood. His words I could not handle, his words I had to twist. I said no one's a god just because they have to spit. Now I feel extremely silly, moving like a pigeon, more embarrassing than that? excess in my religion. This is why it's fitting my last name is Hijab, because I'm so embarrassed I should wear a niqab. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now, uh, you know, we have some comment. Uh, the Muslims, by the way, they respond to me in the comment. And I will show you some. There's a guy, he's a Muslim, he called himself Isaiah 42. And the funny Muslims, you see, what do you say your name is Isaiah 42? Can you find me Isaiah 42 in your Quran? Why the book of Isaiah is gone in Islam? I mean, here you see the stupidity of those who try to defend Islam. If you are a person who believe that Isaiah chapter 42 is good chapter and you agree with it, then why we cannot fight it in the Quran? Good question. Oh, for God, Allah did not protect it. <laughs> now, uh, here this guy, he said to me, if you want to see the conversation here, he said, <clears throat> if you would listen, this is about uh, uh, Mimi Hijab, uh, sorry, the video editor previously known as Mimi Hijab, he said, uh, Allah he prayed for, not to. He said, oh, he did not say that. If you listen to the video, he says, Allah prays not, but for. Here you see the stupidity and the low IQ of those who defend Islam. Because you idiot. What the difference between praise for and praise to? I mean, who is here is suffering from mental illness? Supposedly now you solve it. So Muhammad Hijab, or sorry, the video editor, he said, according to you, Allah prays not to, but for. <laughs> and why Allah prays Muhammad? Who is the God? The guy, he tried to fix it. He make it more horrible. Your God, he prays Muhammad. I thought that Muhammad should be praising God. No, 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 no. In Islam, it's the opposite. Muhammad is the star, superstar. Allah himself, he says, thank you. Thank you, Allah, for having Muhammad. <laughs> look at this stupidity. They tried to fix it. And look what they come with. He did not say Allah prays. Uh, he said Allah prays uh, not for, but uh, not to, but for. <laughs> what, what the difference? <laughs> Secondly, why Allah will praise? Number three, you idiot. The word Yusalli, everybody knows it's mean to pray. And if we go to the verses in the Quran, just to show how stupid those who defend this stupidity in the Quran, how, how the verse is saying that Allah and the angels, Yusalluna al Nabi, both they are doing the same thing. That's mean they have equal act. That's mean Allah is an angel, not the opposite. Because if the angels can do, the same as Allah can do. That's mean this is nothing special. And that's mean Allah is not God. And if Allah is asking the Muslim 
You see, the word yusallun and yusalli is repeated in that verse many times, in the same verse. Let us put the verse on the screen so we can laugh. Chapter 33, verse number 56. And this is your Muslim translation trying to fabricate the meaning. But look what happened by the fabrication they do. Allah and his angels send the blessing on the Prophet. Okay. Let us assume that this is true. But how the angels and Allah send in blessing? I mean, if God they blessed me once, that's it, I'm blessed. And how the angels can do the same as Allah? And where is the word blessing? The word in Arabic, it says, يُصَلُّونَ If we type the word in the Quran, Salah, and يُصَلِّ We will find it all over coming as a prey. Doesn't come as a, you know, blessing. Suddenly it became a blessing. You can go right now to the dictionary, you will see that يُصَلِّ mean he pray, supplicate. Asking God for something. Asking how you know a higher authority. So Allah and His angels, they send the blessing. It's a stupid statement if this is true. For Allah do not need to send the blessing. Allah bless and that's it. Isn't it, isn't it your Muslim? You say the Quran says if Allah wants something to be, He say be. So why He need all of this? Look what He need. Allah and the angels and the believers, all of them they are sending a blessing to the Prophet. Who? What does that mean? What is, is, that a, is that a blessing party? Why Allah blessing need the blessing of the angels? If this is a blessing, here we go. We first, we, who is the first one who did the blessing? Propaganda, lie, as you say, Allah. Okay. Who is the second one he's involved with the blessing? The angels. Who is the one who received the blessing? Muhammad. And who is Allah asking them to ask for send for send the blessing? The believers. What does that mean? Okay, Allah He blessed Muhammad already. The angels they bless Muhammad too, as if they are God. What is the need of the believers? The answer is very simple. It is all about prayer. Oh you believer, pray for Muhammad to receive high rank. Allahu wa malaikatahu yusalluna al nabi. Actually, Mimi Hijab himself, he quoted other verse in the Quran about the word yusalli. And he said, okay, so here it says, Allah uh, uh, yusalli. Does that mean he is praying? Yes, it's been he praying. If we go right now and search in the Quran the word yusalli, and we can read your own translation, you will see that the word yusalli means that's what it means. Let me type it in the screen. Everybody will see in a second. And the funny, by the way, the Muslims, they want to teach me how to read Arabic. Okay, you know what? I mean, I, I cannot find the hypocrisy as those people. Their prophet himself do not know how to read his name. So if this is a problem, and for sure we knew that why they say Christian prince is Arabic is not good, because he's a Christian prince. If I, if, if, if I name, my name is a, a, a Muhammad Ali Dawa, my Arabic, the Turkish guy who don't speak two Arabic words, his Arabic is good. Hmm? If we type the word Yusalli, here we go. What we will find? Huh? Yusalli Musalla, Musalla Ibrahim, the place of the station of prayer. Qa'imun Yusalli, Fanadatul Malaikatu wa huwa Qa'imun Yusalli. Translation. Here we go. This is the same word, Yusalli. Yusalli is the same as Yusallun. Yusalli for one person, Yusallun for a group. Click and translate. Do you see it? He's praying, standing in a prayer. The word you saw, in a praying. So how the this is an act? How this is turned suddenly to be blessing? Do you see the hypocrisy? You can find the word all over the Quran, and you will not find one time the translation coming as a blessing. And I change, by the way, any Muslim can show me a verse in the Quran about Salah, 
and the word Salah is coming as blessing. They lie, my friend. For the Quran is full of stupidity. If you remember when we spoke to uh, uh, Mimi, <clears throat> we did not mute him, mute him. Seven, eight times he hang up on me, and each time I try to talk, mute him. Of course, simply there's no debate, it's just uh, you asking a question, mute him. If you remember, he said the Christian friends do not know how to read, and he said that when I said, when uh, 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 Sam Shamoon and David would ask me about this verse, and I said this verse, it says, and he's, he claimed that I do not know how to read it, you know. اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله والمسيح ابن مريم وما أمروا إلا ليعبدوا إله عبدوا إلها واحدا. so you can go and listen to what I said in that video and you can move your mouse over every word here and you can hear it. do you know that? and you can get them busted. اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم Arbaban Min Duni. So you can very easy put my video there, see how a Christian prince was reading, and the, the, I mean it's it's hilarious. And not only that, they said that what I said that the verse saying that they took their monks and their rabbi or their rabbi and their monks as gods instead of the, the Allah and the Messiah is a lie. It doesn't say that, but look how we can get them busted. Do you know how? When you put your mouse over the words here, it shows you the translation. I don't know if you can see it. Let me zoom in. Ittakhadu, they have taken. Write it down. Write it down, word by word. You see, what we will do, we will see if a Christian prince was lying or Mimi Hijab, oh, sorry, the video editor, previously known as Mimi Hijab, who is lying. They have taken their rabbis and their monks at this move. Arbaban as gods, as lords. Minduni, here they are translating the word beside it twice. The fact it says instead, not just Minduni. Instead of who? Allah and the Messiah. Do you see it? Beside, okay, in the Muslim translation it says beside, right? Okay, beside Allah and the Messiah, the son of Mary. And this is what I say. Who's lying? And if I'm lying, why the Muslim website saying what I'm saying? Huh? If you read the Muslim translation here, you will notice something very funny. Look at this. They have taken their scholars and monks as lords. Lords, he should be as God. Kebeter. Beside Allah. And, and between two, bra two, two brackets also. Where, where is the word also coming from? Beside Allah and the Messiah, the son of Mary. Even in their own translation. So they took who as gods and rabbis? As, 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 as gods? The rabbi and the monks. Beside who? Or instead of who? Instead of Allah and the Messiah. <laughs> so they do, they, you know, the funny, they were preparing themselves to avoid debate. This is the whole point. Let us do some video editing, play them and say, did you say that? If you try to answer, we shut him up, we mute him. And then we get a lot of time to laugh and, and, and see how much they are terrified and scared. Did you ask yourself why those people, they want to debate him? I mean, okay, the guy, he called you in Skype. Do you debate him? Let us see. You can ask him about those questions. But have, let us have a normal debate. No, they will not. And the funny, they say that Christian Prince, he hang up on Muslim. I did not even talk there. They muted me every two seconds. For they are terrified. And not only that, they put my, the speakers, for my voice, far away from the microphone, so nobody can hear my answer. So, the point is, we're trying to share with you, that when there's Muhammad and they try to defend, they make it more horrible. Allah praised Muhammad 
that make it more horrible, as this idiot here he said. Allah, he was praising Muhammad. He praised two, not four. He praised... Uh, uh, <laughs> and then he said, I say, somebody, my name is accurate because Isaiah 42 is speak about Prophet Muhammad. Here you see another stupidity. Where did they learn from this from? Where Isaiah 42 is speaking about Muhammad. I mean, when, I, when we say that Muslims, they worship Muhammad, we can prove it in two seconds. If we go to Isaiah 42 right now, what we will see? Is it speaking about Muhammad or speaking about God? Or speaking about who? Those cowards, they are desperate to find Muhammad anywhere. They could not prove that he is a prophet. So they say, Isaiah 42 is speaking about Muhammad. You idiot, go to Isaiah 42. And let us see together where is Muhammad there. Let me show you the, the Muslims <coughs> video actually. Actually, uh, I think David Wood, he made a video about it, right? I think David Wood, he made a video about it. Let me see if I can play it. For it's really funny. But... Uh, uh, let us do this. <laughs> you will die laughing at this madness. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Actually, I made a video about it a long time ago too, before even David. But the, the, the video David he did, it was, uh, uh, let us say, more funny. Uh, but I'm trying to find it. Um, let us see. Hold on. <clears throat> As we say always, stupidity is amazing. Give me a second. Here we go. Yeah, this is the video. Merciful Servant boasts about being the world's largest Muslim channel. The channel does two things exceptionally well. One, it convinces Muslims to mass flag videos that criticize Muhammad and the Quran. Two, it convinces Muslims that Muhammad is God. As usual, Muslims are going to deny this. Also, as usual, I'm going to prove conclusively that I'm right. Here goes. Merciful Servant posted a video titled Prophet Muhammad, S-A-W, this stands for Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a phrase usually translated as peace be upon him, but which actually means Allah's prayers be upon him and peace. Prophet Muhammad in the Bible, truth, uncove. Sadly, uncove is not a word. <laughs> this video is meant to show that the Bible, the book that Muslims tell us has been thoroughly corrupted, contains a prophecy about Muhammad. And we're supposed to take this prophecy seriously, even though the Bible's been corrupted. Consistency at its finest. The prophecy that supposedly proves that Muhammad is a true prophet is found in chapter 42 of the book of the prophet Isaiah. The narrator of the video tells us that this is a prophecy about a very special person. What? God starts the chapter by drawing our attention to a very special person that he will send. He describes this person as 
my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. According to Merciful Servant, verse 13 tells us that this special person will be a warrior. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a... Did, did, you, did you notice what happened suddenly? Go forth as a mighty man. Like what happened those Muslims? It's like you have a gas suddenly, you know, like it's like there's something wrong in the engine. There's some kind of dirt and suddenly the piston open. So you push the gas, you push the gas and the car is not moving. And suddenly the guy go, what happened? And go forth. What? What, what, what happened? What, what happened? Say it again. Warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. Merciful Servant then tells his viewers that verse 13 is clearly a prophecy about Muhammad and not about Jesus. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had to engage in many battles with the idol-worshipping enemies of God and ultimately prevailed against them. By comparison, Jesus did not triumph over his enemies. According to Christians, he was crucified by them. Moreover, Jesus wasn't interested in fighting. He was not a man of war. He was a pacifist, according to the Bible. He said such things as, For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. And, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants... Guys, isn't it those people that say where Jesus says, I am God? Isn't it this verse saying, I am God? My kingdom is not of this earth? <laughs> Muslims, Jesus is not from this earth. You are saying to us, where is Jesus? I am God. He is saying, my kingdom is not in this earth. <laughs> say it again, say it again, Abdul. <laughs> I mean, for the, for the sake of their stupidity, to prove a point which is stupid, they get busted. It's just quote for us that if Jesus cannot be Muslim. Why? Because he is not a criminal like your prophet. And you are calling your prophet a warrior. Your prophet was a potato. He never even go to war. He hide between his wife's legs. And we can prove it. And the day he tried to show off in the war, they broke his teeth and he went back to his wife. And this is why your prophet, when he say Bismillah, he cannot say it correctly. He say Bismillah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, like that can I. Because his teeth is gone. He did not go to war. I challenged him to show me where Muhammad was fighting in the war. Never, for he's a coward potato. Jesus did not go for war for his God. He can destroy the whole world by saying B. What war? Say it to us more. Let's fight. Muslims in the comments section praised Allah for such a clear proof that Muhammad was a true prophet. Are the rest of you convinced yet? You know, when someone's making an argument about something that could affect your entire life and your eternal destiny, it's always a good idea to carefully examine the argument. And when it's a Muslim apologist making the argument, you really, really need to take a closer look because some of these guys will do just about anything to convince you that Muhammad was a prophet. Notice something peculiar about this graphic of Isaiah 42, 13. According to Merciful Servant, the verse is about the special person who would be a warrior for God. But the subject has been removed and replaced with an ellipsis, the dot, dot, dot. You use... Uh, so what? This is not corruption. You can take chapters in Islam. We cannot... Wait, so, so what? David, what's wrong with you? So he just put the three dots there because he don't want you to read the verses before it. Hello, this is not corruption, brother. Okay, why you take the verses before it? What happened? Even the same verse, why you cut it? They do all the time this, even to the Quran. Even to the Quran. So when a Muslim, he put the three dots. By the way, Muhammadan, what's wrong with you? Why you put the three dots? You it. Are you Trinitarian? What stupid are you? I thought you are against the Trinity. So what this three dot is about? What do you mean make it for? Even here three dot, you idiot. Like hello, 
You're a prophet, he say Allahu Akbar three times. He shake hands three times. Say Assalamu Alaikum three times. He shake his private part three times. He clean his bum three times. He, 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 he blow his nose three times. You know, I mean, even if he say Assalamu Alaikum, he say Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. Assalamu Alaikum. Wa alaikum. What an idiot. Three times you have to be. Imagine, guys, you enter a place and you say to people, Shalom to you. They say Shalom. Then you say Shalom to you. They say Shalom. They say Shalom. Say, What's wrong with you? That's Muhammad. And now the Mohammedan, they are carrying the career of the video editor. They are video editing. They are Bible editing. They edit anything. And the funny, they accuse us of corruption when they are the people of corruption. Why you cut off the verses? For you are a fraud like your prophet. Continue, Brother David. Use an ellipsis when you intentionally omit some content. Normally, you omit this content because it's irrelevant to the point you're making. But you should never use an ellipsis to completely change the meaning of the text. If Merciful Servant is being truthful with his viewers, then when we go to the actual verse to see what's been removed, we're going to find that the subject is this special person who will somehow turn out to be Muhammad. However, if the subject of the verse is someone else entirely, and Merciful Servant deliberately removed the name in order to completely distort the meaning of the text, we can only conclude that he is attempting to deceive his viewers because he knows that they won't bother to fact check anything he's saying. As usual. Let's see what the verse actually says. I'll use the same translation that Merciful Servant uses. Isaiah 42, 13. <laughs> the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man he you donkey the one you said to me isaiah is about muhammad the lord the lord shall go forth as a mighty man actually this is destroy all of islam because you muslim you say god cannot come as a man and you say the trinity is the creation of the Christian that you don't believe in it. But if we go in the Old Testament, we see tons of verses speaking about God coming, speaking, appearing as a man. He appeared to, to Abraham as a man. And the verse here where the Muslims are quoting to prove to us that this is about Muhammad, it says it clearly, this is the Lord himself. This is God himself. So look what happened. They took the most important words in the verse, which is in the beginning. And they zoom in just to make the whole verse about Muhammad when the verse saying from the first word, the Lord. Do you see the fraud? The people of editing, they edit anything. It says they are the Lord. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. In Isaiah, God states that this special person will be a warrior and will go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up. I'm using a headset. He's, he's, he's like, his voice is coming in my, man, my ears is going to be blood. Like, what is, why you go crazy like this? You go forward like a crazy man. Because this is a verse about Prophet Muhammad, brother. I mean, I have to be excited. Even though I cut the first sentence, the, the first part of the sentence, to make it look like something it's not. This is how fraud they are. And ask yourself why, why they would do that if they are religious, for they are following a fraud. A religious man following a good religious prophet or religion would not do this. Where is your dignity? Where is your honesty? Do you think really that this guy, he did not notice that the verse says the Lord in the first two words and he dropped them by mistake? No way. Fraud. They are fraud like prophet. Prophet of, of the putty. Jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry. Even here it says like a man of war. It says like a man. Like. <laughs> cry. Yay. <laughs> roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy. Okay, thank you, David, for getting them busted. Here we have more comment. Let me show you this guy. 
this Abdul. Actually, I think he is in the chat right now. His name Ibn Al Ibn Al Arabi. Uh, Ibn Al Arabi. I'm not sure who's your father, but look like there's a lot of Arab, and you call yourself Ibn Al Arabi. No problem. We will find him one day. The Arabian Prophet. Why are you deleting this video? Be a man and let the world see the stupidity of this video. Uh, I, uh, and I said to him, be a man and post it in your YouTube account, potato. Don't you want to see the world to see the stupidity of this video? This is my video. I want you to show the world the stupidity of my video. Post it in your account. Why you didn't do that? The reason I delete my videos because you Muslims, you you know, you are always offended. You try to silence us, and YouTube take your side. But doesn't work. Doesn't matter really. Our videos is all over. We take it in one place. We have it in a thousand places. That's why we ask people to download the videos. And I ask you too, if you are proud that this video proves something good to Muslims. I ask you to be a man and uh, I challenge every single Abdul in the world to download my videos, all of them, and post them in their channels. Be a man. <laughs> uh, I'm, you know, by, by the way, why you, why you say to me, be a man? I mean, you Muslims are very funny. Be a man. What does that mean exactly? Your prophet never was a man. You're a prophet. He never had a job. His job is to sleep with an old woman in her bed and get paid for it. Is that what a man do? You're a prophet. He agree in a conspiracy with an old woman who have a few husbands before him just because she is rich to make her father drunk and make him believe that he agreed to marry him to her. Is that a man action? Or this is a fraud and the funny, the Muslim, they say, Muhammad, his name is a trustworthy. Muhammad is a trustworthy. Muhammad is the trustworthy, making the father of his, the women who want to marry from, get drunk. Isn't it drinking is haram? What kind of a prophet he used the tool of the devil? According to you Muslims, this is the devil. <laughs> I forgot the Quran says that Allah, he, uh, the alcohol and being a drunk is a miracle from Allah. Do you know that, guys? Do you know? That drunking, to be drunk, according to the Quran, is a miracle of Allah. It's in front of you. Chapter 16, verse number 67. In different verse, Muhammad, he switched because now he is dying. He can't drink no more. So he said, alcohol is from shaitan. But Allah, he promised alcohol in heaven. And Allah, he says in the Quran, supposedly, that alcohol is a great. And look, guys, by the way. Look how the translation took over the word the drunk. Where is the word drunk? Where is the word drunk? Change the translator. What happened? Through the process of translations, Quran go in diet. Read. And the, from the fruits and the, of the date and palms and grape, you uh, deriving strong drink. What strong drink? Where, where, where it says strong, what is that? And here between two brackets, guys. This is what's before, brother, the order to formation of alcohol drink. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, before the formation of the, uh, the, the alcohol drink, it was halal, it was a blessing from Allah, it was a miracle from Allah, and now it's not halal, what happened? Do you see it? They change the translation. It says, being a drunk. Sakaran, you liars. To be drunk. A bunch of cowards don't even dare to translate their book in an honest way. 
You see, when people they start hiding what is written in their book, it's mean they are ashamed of it. Otherwise, why they are hiding what it says there? Let us find different translator. Go. Different translator. Let us see who. Hmm. And from the fruits of the palm and veins, you take therefrom intoxicant. Really? Well, how come this word does not appear in the other translation, Muslims? What happened here? Where this word is coming from? Do you think this is a, happened by mistake? Sakata Sahwan? Nima Mama? Nima Mama? Nima, you want to call me? Okay, Nima, I'm going to open just for you. <clears throat> Guys, we have a person, his name is Nima. And Nima looks like he's excited. <laughs> Shall we take him? What do you think? Shall we take him? Give me, give me one or no. <clears throat> Nima, you promise you will call me? If you don't call me, I will tell your mom, okay? Continue. Then I will make you read the verse in the front of us right away. Okay, Nima. Nima, I am on a Skype. Are you going to call me Nima? Text me, text me. Nima, I need to make an account. Oh, you need to make an account. Hmm. Look, hold on. We have somebody here says you want to debate. Hold on. Let's see. Maybe we got a fish. Where? What happened? Where is the name gone? It's gone. See, because the in my in my Skype I have like thousands of names and they pop up like crazy. Where is the guy who said you might be paid? Uh, I don't know, his name's gone. Maybe this one of the same. No, this is an old one. So you made me come here online for nothing? Shame on you. May Allah shorten your private part because the Prophet, he says he will give you endless. I hope he will make it like one meter less. <laughs> as long as your private part as short as your brain. Uh, <clears throat> ah, here we go. We found somebody. Okay, but I don't know if he's online because this is, I don't know what time. Mm, maybe, oh, this is from the morning. Do we have any Muslim would like to say something? Any Muslim want to say anything? How your Allah, he blessed the the drunken and the drunk and even the Muslim by the way they used to go to the mosque and they are totally drunk I'm not I'm not kidding the Quran says so brother the Quran says so remember the, the, the guy in the hadith about the shaitan he fought and shaitan go inside your anus hadith says so the brother hadith says so the Muslims they used to come oh sorry we need to go to the Quran hold on the yellow page is not uh, the hadith the Muslim they used to go and they are totally drunk when they are praying and you I wish I have a, a ca video camera at that time chapter 4 verse number 43 Muhammad was praising being drunk as we showed you in the previous verse 
chapter 16 verse number 67 claiming that being a drunk is a sign from Allah which is it's true by the way I mean who is going to make a drunk unless this is Allah explain to me how you drink this something and you go crazy obviously it's Allah sign hello Muhammad could not take miracle but he claimed now that the beer and black label is a miracle from Allah in this verse you will see that the Muslims are praying and they are totally drunk do you see it do you see it oh who you believe approach approach not the prayer when you are drunk this is what the muslims was and why muhammad he said to them don't drink no more he didn't say actually don't drink he said don't go to pray when you are drunk because the Arabs they start laughing at this religion a prophet and he have a bunch of a drunken people falling apart during the prayer the only they are drunk the prophet is drunk the followers are drunk Allah is a drunk and Muhammad make a verse saying that being drunk is a blessing from Allah and it's a sign and the verse in front of you claiming even you can make good provision from it good money Good income, halal. So how here it was a provision of fair, surely sign, surely sign, surely this is sign from Allah. Being a drunk is a sign from Allah. So you make people understand. So if we see somebody is a drunk, now we will understand that this is a sign from Allah. Are you there, Ibn Arabi? Are you in the bushes? Ibn Arabi, he says to me, be a man and keep the video. I said to him, be a man and download it and post it in your account, you coward. No, I don't keep videos on my channel. So people will download it. Be a man and download my videos. Uh, I can say to you, be a man. I mean, if you become a man, nobody will marry you. Hello. Look at those Muslims who live in the West. I, I cannot say to them, be a man, to any one of them. The Quran says in chapter 5, verse 51, take not Christian and Jews as a friends. Be a man and don't pay tax. Be a man and don't take the citizenship. Be a man and don't be obedience to their law. We cannot do that. You are a potato. You are not a man. The Quran says that the one who take them as a friend, he is one of them. You are not even a Muslim. You are a potato. You compromise your religion just to get little money in your pocket and some food. And yet you claim that you believe in Allah and the land of the kuffar is dirty, filthy, but you die. You get desperate. You cross the sea. You cross the shoes. You die in the ocean to cross the borders just to be in the land of the kuffar. Why the Quran says to you, Oh, who believe, take not the Christian and the Jews as a friends. They are friends to each other. Who, who makes them as a friend? He's one of them. <laughs> you are one of us. <laughs> you will never be one of us. You are a potato. We don't do taqiyya. How you can be one of us? You don't, you, you know, did you hear Yasa Qadri, Qadri saying to Mimi Hijab, I'm sorry, previously named, known as Mimi Hijab, the, the video editor, previously known as Mimi Hijab. Did he say to the video editor, that I don't want to do Tawriya. Well, do you know what Tawriya mean? Hiding stuff now. We don't know how to stuff. This is what the Muslims do. Like Taqiyya, you know? It's a different, different, uh, uh, different definition. We don't want to do hide stuff now, you know? Don't uh, go don't go there. You know? What translation is given near you? An accurate translation to the Quran? I don't see any translation. You can get translation of uh, Osama Dakdo. Uh, not everything there, I agree with it, but most of it is very accurate. Yeah. Do we have any Muslim? Okay, so we open sky for nothing. What a shame. I thought we got a fish. We did not even get a cow. Um... All right. Okay, guys. I think uh, Brother David and Sam Shamoun, they will be live on air soon. Is that right, guys? 
Are they going to be live soon? So I don't want to hold you longer. We are just here, you know, showing you the stupidity of this cult, how they fabricate everything. They try to change the, Quran, the Quran meaning. They try to change the Bible meaning. They, they try to escape answering any question. And the, the purpose is one is deception. But before we go, I want to remind you of this nice song, which really I like it. You know, I wish I can add it to the Quran because it sounds like Quran for me. I don't know. I mean, for me, it sounds like Quran, to be honest with you. Just to remind you of it. Before you go. The fact that Islam is a religion of excess toward a mere human being, it seemed to me that another response may be in order. I thought to myself, since Muhammad Hijab likes spitting so much, maybe I would spit a little something in his honor. If I only had a beat, and then it hit me. My name's Muhammad Hijab, I cannot debate. That's why I beat my chest like a great ape. I yell, hoop and holler, hoping you won't see. I'm dropping logic blunders like bananas from a tree. With God, I refute claims that David didn't make. That's called a straw man, and I'm called a snake. He said we treat our prophet like a demigod. Some bathed in his spit, while others drank his blood. His words I could not handle, his words I had to twist. I said, no one's a god, just because they have to spit. Now I feel extremely silly, moving like a pigeon. More embarrassing than that? excess in my religion. This is why it's fitting my last name is Hijab, because I'm so embarrassed I should wear a niqab. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> Don't embarrass yourself. Don't embarrass yourself. Ha 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 The chapter of the spit. Brothers and sisters, the chapter of the spit is better a little bit. And Allah in the Quran, he says, if we cause you to forget about spitting, we will give you a better spit or similar spit. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots. So they are not going live on air. I thought they are going live on air. No. Oh, OK. I don't know. Maybe I'm mistaken. So anyone have a question for me? Why you are scared to call? Uh, Nima, you see, uh, People, they say to me, why you say some words which you should not say? I mean, you guys, you tell me, should I say to him, get lost? I have to say so. Get lost. <laughs> I open Skype for you, you coward. And you said I need to make an account. And you never call me. And, and we are laughing. And now you are saying, coward, son of Muta. Go and do three night stands as the prophet, he told you. Rented women. Go rent, go. Call the renting office of Allah. By the way, do you know that in Iran, they have renting office for muta? Sheikhs, they have, this is big business in Iran. Actually, there's a documentary, I'm not joking with you, on the BBC. A documentary made by a journalist, she's from Iran. She went to Iran and she hide, like she recorded her documentary secretly. And she show how the business of Muta are run. You can, I don't know what the name of the documentary, but you can search it. How women in Iran, especially poor women, you know, it's prostitution, but it's legal. It's legal prostitution. You go to the sheikh, you need money. You go to the sheikh, you say, I want to offer for myself if you have a customer. The sheikh, he offer you, he, the other guy, he come to him. He says, do you know have a woman? She want to do Muta? The sheikh, he take commission. And he rent you the women. And if you don't believe me, search it in BBC documentary. I, I'm, I don't remember the name of the of the video, so I can give you the name. But I think it's very well known. A lot of people saw it already. And you know the the funny, they speak too much about like dignity, ethic. When you hear them, you believe them. So why Islamic countries are very corrupt? I mean, the police is, guys, in the Middle East, you can kill a man and get out of jail after 10 minutes if you have money, literally. Right?
This is the truth. Something about the naked king. What is that story? Well, if you have my book, you can read about the naked king. Naked king. But you know, when when Yasser Qadri he said about the naked king, he you know he surprised me by the way by saying that, because the naked king uh, is about a stupid king who sent his soldiers to find the best tailor and he ordered the tailor they told the tailor you have to make a, a, a dress to the king which nobody's seen like ever and if you don't make it he will chop your head so the tailor he don't know what to do i mean how, what, what if you don't like it so he told the king i am going to make a dress no one have ever liked it before fool and people who hate you they cannot see it who the fool if somebody is a fool stupid or somebody is hypocrite liar he cannot see it the king he said okay sound great so they gave him six months to make that let us say to make the dress when the six month is over they told him bring the dress but uh, well, there is no such a dress so he came to the king and he had nothing with him but he acted as he held, is holding carrying a dress the king looked at his hand he saw nothing but he did not dare to say there's no dress because he told him if somebody is a fool he will not see it so now if he say this is a i don't see it then the, the whole nation will know that the king is a fool and he's a liar so the king he did not say i did not see the dress the tailor he told him take off your clothes and he acted as if he's dressing him up and then the king he had to go out to see his nation the people he want to make a speech he go out and he is naked and the whole people they knew that the dress this dress is a special if you are a person who is a hypocrite you hate the king or you are a liar or you are a fool you will not see it and because of that nobody dared to say the king is naked he's naked he's wearing nothing but there was a kid who is on you know he's a kid he said the king is naked the king is naked <laughs> <laughs> and the funny that Yasser Kadri he compare his prophet story with this story which means he is saying that his prophet is the naked king fool and he is the kid who is willing to say the king is naked I mean I don't know what what moment in the video he said that but I could not really believe it that he said this. It's very embarrassing. I don't know if the Muslims notice how he compare his God Muhammad. Where is where is the video? Let's see if, if he if here. Uh, I think in this part here. On Yasir Qadi's channel, what good would removing part of it from yours be? Do you really think that'll work? But I know what hijab will say. We did this because we didn't want to confuse the masses. Muslims don't need to know about Quran preservation. It'll hurt the Iman and cause more doubt. Like Yasir Qadi said, it's not wise to discuss these issues in public. Better that we keep it behind closed doors. There was even a bigger bombshell that came later. And by the way, this is now a well-known open secret amongst many Muslim graduate students and, and, and academics around the world. And yeah. this is well known. Traditional understandings of Ahruf and Qiraat cannot answer some of these pressing questions that are now being poked by our uh, people outside of, by our academics, not our, by their academics outside of the faith tradition. You see, in a Muslim environment, there's always some respect that we have for the Quran. We should. In a Muslim environment, we'll press a little bit and then we'll say, okay, khalas, sami'na wa ta'na. That's great, alhamdulillah. Hmm. When you go to academia, they don't have that red line. And they're gonna just, you know, the, the, the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're gonna just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that's not true, and this and that. Did and you see it? Did you hear it? Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? He mentioned the king with no clothes. They don't have that red line. And they're gonna just, you know, the, 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 the famous story of the emperor with no clothes. They're gonna just point out, no, that doesn't make any sense. See, did you, did you see what he said? I really could not believe it that he is quoting something written in my book about the naked emperor
calling his prophet the naked emperor and those people they have no red line they will say he's naked this is what he said you know what I believe what will happen next that this guy they will put a lot of pressure on him you know the, the gang of Islam is big and he being famous for Muslims would not would not uh, would not help him because he went he went against something they don't they don't want this so they will put a lot of a pressure on him so he have one of two choices either he have to apologize like a potato say I am wrong or he goes stubborn and then he will lose a lot either they have to make a secret meeting Mimi the kid who Yasser told him to be a student for him and others and say okay you know what we made we made a lot of poopoo can we fix it let us make another interview and say something different and I think this will happen maybe mostly unless Yasser Kadri is man enough to stand for what he spoke of otherwise I think mostly they will put a lot of pressure on already there's a lot of pressure on him a lot of Muslims angry of him if you search right now how many people they are making videos against him you won't believe it from the Muslims. Why? Because he said what they don't want him to say. And actually he in the video, he mentioned that this is, was a linked email, you know, in a, which means secret, you know, we are exchanging information secretly somebody he linked he linked those information if we go here let us see where he mentioned that i don't know if it's in the beginning obviously any everything you know uh, you know all whatever broke loose but again this was not something i brought up in public and i would never bring it up in and I don't think it is wise to bring it up in public. Every single student of knowledge knows who studies Ulum al-Quran that the most difficult topics are Ahruf al-Qira'at. Yeah, but how, how this is became in public? He sent emails to the Muslims and one of the e Muslims, he, he leaked the email to public. So everybody will see that Yasser Qadri is teaching that Quran is a fraud. Hafs and Asim and so on, Munazil, meaning revelation from... It was in the beginning? Well, isn't it, this is the beginning here? Hold on, let's see. I think this is the beginning. From Allah. Here is what <laughs> Yasir Qadi said. So one of the brothers, um, yani he did something, again, unethical. Uh, he was expelled from the list, and the list was basically banned because of that stuff, because of that. He couldn't refute to my argument, so he sent it to uh, one of your madkhalis in... Uh, uh, in uh, England and so then of course this medkhali gave it to the other one and so obviously any everything you know uh, you know all whatever broke loose but again this was not something I brought up in public and I would never bring it up in public he will never bring it up in public and for sure they will paint the Jews for this but anyway if you remember guys before the, the, the Muslims always they betray each other and in like in in outside they show unity but behind doors they threat even each other to kill each other if you remember the email, let me see if I can find it. As long I thought David Wood and uh, uh, Sam Shamon will come live, but as long they are not, let us see if we can find it. The idiot, they have Sam Shamon in their mailing list. And they were sending uh, the email to Sam Shamoon without noticing. Or maybe they know it, I don't know. Let me see if I can find it. You will die laughing when you read it. They were talking about how Sam Shamoon he humiliated, 
هي هي نادر احمد هاو نادر احمد جيت سبانك باي مي بات ان بابليك دي دونت سي ذات دي سي ذا اوبوزيت ا ريس سي I'm trying to find it. Oh, here we go. But this is not maybe not all of it. But you know, I mean, it's a comedy. I don't know if I should show you this, but let us laugh. Okay, this is an email. The Muslims are exchanging the same as the email they do with the uh, Yasser Qadri. Behind the doors, there is a fight. In the front, they say, you know, we are against Christian Prince, we are against Sam Shamu, we are against David Wood. Look at this. Here, the uh, Sam Shi publish. This is a reply with Sam Zawadi attempt to uh, uh, salvage his false prophet, etc. Okay. Now, uh, hello. Uh, he's calling. This is here. He sent it to. Uh, from Sami Zatari sent to John Joshin Katars. Okay. Here, this email is from what? From Sami Zatari sent to Nader, Nader Ahmad. Okay. What the email? Hey Sam Shamoon. That on the BC, etc. So like you know, name calling, etc. But let's continue. And all of this is shared. They are sending it to, to Sam Shamoon. I mean, it's stupid. I mean, look how stupid they are. Uh Sami Zatari, he sent this to Sam Shamoon. Okay, this is from Sami Zatari to Sam Shamoon again. Uh, this is from Sami Zatari to Sam Shamoon. Maybe this is not the page we are looking for, but let us see. From Sami Zatari to Nader. Look at this email. Let's read this. On a side note, that uh, what is funny about this that is neither come to me and saying he want to work with us answering Christianity.com now when we all sudden he sees something he, he had does not like he immediately says he is uh, ignoring me and denying uh, all contact with me so here they start slaughtering each other okay all right in fact Nader is trying to make his this debate uh, not happen debate between whom between him and uh, Sam Shamoon. <laughs> but they are saying that Sam Shamoon is running away. <laughs> but inside, behind the doors, they are saying, look, it says here, he is running from the debate since he see that Sam is very serious to go through with it. But in public, they say the opposite. They say Sam Shamoon is running. But the email they are sending to each other, they are saying that this kid is running away from Sam Shamoon. All right. Uh, please, Nader, don't waste your time ever again to show how lame you are. Okay. I mean, read. Uh, you have uh, settled and run from the debate. Okay. Another email. Nader, he sent an email now to all of those. Okay. Sami, you requested help organize this debate has been denied i do not want anything uh, to do with you sorry i have adjusted my setting to send all your emails to my spam folder okay please remove me from your email list okay okay this is getting silly same as atari saying to another ahmad you don't know who or what I am? Excuse me? All this is talking, taking place because I brought you and Sam together in one room? <laughs> anyway, so I mean the email and later they start threatening each other. I want to fight you. I challenge you. I have a black belt. I want to break your, your hand. I want to break your arm. I mean, things go so crazy. They want to... Okay, hold on, hold on. You coward. You coward to meet me face to face, especially considering how you run from your tail with your tail. What, 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 what? <laughs> and okay, and then let us see. 
Uh, I mean, the emails are really funny. Here, Sami Zatari sent an email to uh, uh, Nuno. Uh, just to remind you all that neither Ahmed was supposed to be debating Sam Shamoon. I'm surprised how people forgot about this. As you can all see, Nader has been running all from the, this time. Nader did not think we would forget. Okay. Islam Life, he sent an email to Nader Ahmad. I don't know who this Islam Life. Assalamu alaikum. Okay. As much as uh, uh, outrage uh, uh, as I feel, as little khabith, uh, khabith means like filthy, like, you know, the, 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 like Allah, Allah is khabith. Usama, they are calling now Usama names. And his uh, Kufa, you know, the young fool Sami Zatari. So you know, here we go. Uh, anyway, you can read. I mean, it's, 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 it's a joke. Actually, even they mention my name here. Let me see where my name appear. Even though they are fighting about something else. Let us see. Um, Here we go. Sami Zatari is a person who claimed that he he want to debate me. And uh, I don't know much about Islam. Look what in their email they say. All I know about what Sam did to Osama, but what we don't know is that the Christian prince also smoked around Sami and exposed him very badly, but not before insulting the Prophet Muhammad. And Islam. In fact, Sami is so ashamed of it, what the Christian prince did to him, that he is hiding the debate. And he refused to show anyone the debate. Do you see? This is this is in their emails. In their emails, they spank each other. Hey, Christian Prince, he spank you. He left his five fingers mark in your bum. Do you remember when Sam Shamoon, he made a joke of you? Do you remember when... Uh, this is what they talk about. Look at them. This is their email. This is their email. This is not our email. But in public... Uh, Sam Shamoon, he does not know anything about Islam. They are ignorant, you know? There's a Christian prince, you are, anyone can debate Christian prince. Look at this. This is, uh, again, the Armenian mining. To talk honestly here, our list of loses. Nader lost his debate with Sam Shamoon, and the debate should be removed of his, from his side. Nader debate with the Christian prince should be removed, not because Nader admitted animal sex, but since he cannot refute CP claim. <laughs> look, the Muslims, they are saying it's okay the Prophet have animals, uh, sex with animals. I mean, look at this email. They, his, they are not upset because Nader agree that his Prophet have sex with the goat. They are upset that he could not refute me. I mean, do you see the stupidity? Look, read carefully. Nader debate with the Christian prince should be removed, not cause Nader admitted animal sex. Uh, the debate was about what? We were talking about his prophet having sex with a goat. Not just animal sex. But since he cannot refute CP claim, Osama lost badly with his debate with, with Sam Shaun. <laughs> I mean, it's a mask. <laughs> ah, and look here, Sami Zatari is answering. Oh, lulul. Very stupid indeed. He claimed Christian Prince humiliated me. <laughs> That's why all Muslims in the room were laughing at CP and running away from the debate. Um, really? Do you remember, guys, the guy who I told you, I told him to read to show me approve that your prophet is against gays do you remember that is the kid so the stupid he went 
and he quote the, the hadith which I want. But if I showed him the hadith, he will refuse it. He will say, this is the aid. So I ask him, are you sure this hadith before you read it? No, no, before you read it, please. Are you sure this is sahih? He said, yes, it's sahih. Are you sure? It's sahih. And then when he arrived where it says that the prophet, he have again his house, he fly. So anyway, this is what happened behind doors when Muslims, they have a private conversation. You've been busted by a Christian prince. You've been humiliated by Sam Shamoon. But in public, they are victorious. Right? Look at this. What a bunch of kids. Do you see the video of Mufti Abu Layth in the UK laughing in that? They are laughing from pain, my friend. They are laughing from pain. You see those people, they laugh just to cover their, the, the pain. The laugh here is a laugh of pain. Do you think, Kiri? I mean, later they will regret that they are laughing at Yasser Kadri because Yasser Kadri later, he will try to fix it. And then all those videos, they will take it down. They will try to hide it. See, all those they are attacking now Yasser Kadri, later they will try to hide it. They will be ashamed of what they did. But this is how the Muslims are. This is how they are. Do we have anyone have a question? Again, stupidity is amazing. Exactly. <laughs> but you know what? I like this song, and honestly. Like, I think I am from now on attached to Rabbi music. I mean, this Anthony is really good. I don't know that he is good in in in, in Rabbi music, like Prophet Muhammad. That another response may be in order. I thought to myself, since Muhammad Hijab likes spitting so much, maybe I would spit a little something in his honor. If I only had a beat, and then it hit me. My name's Muhammad Hijab, I cannot debate. That's why I beat my chest like a great ape. I yell, hoop and holler, hoping you won't see. I'm dropping logic blunders like bananas from a tree. With God, I refute claims that David didn't make. That's called a straw man, and I'm called a snake. He said we treat our prophet like a demigod. Some bathed in his spit, while others drank his blood. His words I could not handle, his words I had to twist. I said, no one's a god just because they have to spit. Now I feel extremely silly, moving like a pigeon. More embarrassing than that? excess in my religion this is why it's fitting my last name is he jab because i'm so embarrassed i should wear a niqab don't embarrass yourself <laughs> 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 I mean. the name of the chapter the chapter of the spitting just add it in your book Don't embarrass yourself. What an embarrassing religion. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? Any Muslim want to say anything? Anyone? Uh, the the one who did that, uh, his name is uh, his brother, uh, brother Anthony Roger. He go always uh, with the brother David Wood in his channel sometime. Yeah, this is the name of the chapter is chapter of spitting. I mean, we ask them why you're a prophet. His spit is collected. Why you are Muslim fighting over his poo poo? Actually, there's a movie about the Muslim Sunni fighting over the poo poo of the camel of Aisha. Not even the poo-poo of Aisha, the camel of Aisha. You remember the video I showed to you? Uh, Dominique saying, do you think Nasser Kadri is still going through his crisis? Well, for sure, um, um, you see, uh, like uh, those are, this is a gang culture. They are gang. And all of us, we knew that 
none of the Muslims really will take his side unless he is, let us say, uh, maybe very educated, but even the educated one, they will not accept what he said because he should not say that in public. You see, even the one who support what he said, they agree with him. They will say, why you say that in public? And now the Christians are laughing at us. The atheists are laughing at us. The ex-atheists are, the ex-Muslims are laughing at us. Why you did that? So even the one who understand very well his point of a view, that yes, the Quran is not really preserved, it's a stupid book. Even though in the video he says, by the way, no, we Muslims, we, believe, we accept the Quran is from Allah. But when the guy asked him, when, when the, the video editor previously named Mimi Hijab, he asked him, if we give you a blank Mus'haf, which means a book, are you going to write the same Quran or not? He said like, he could not answer. So you believe in which, which, which Quran? If you cannot write the Quran, if you do not accept that we can now have a preserved Quran and we can write it down in a blank page. So what Quran you believe in? He said, we believe in the Quran. The Quran sent from Allah. There's no question about that. What Quran? You just refuse to write it down. You just refuse to accept which one? Do you see the problem? He told him, if we give you a blank page to write the Quran down for us, it is a problem. He refused. He said, I cannot do that. And the stupid the video, Mr. Video Editor, previously known as Mimi Hijab, because he's a stupid, he insists. And by insisting, he make it more poo-poo. Fired so badly <coughs> like you cannot imagine. Hijab asks, if you had a blank Mus'haf, meaning a Quran, and write down with no interference what was revealed from Allah, would you write down what corresponds to the existing Quran we have? Yasakadi interrupted him and didn't even let him finish the question. I'll ask you one question to try and make this as specific as possible, I think. If I were to give you a blank Mus'haf, yeah, and uh, and tell you to write what is munazzal verbatim from Allah into that mushaf with no human interference, would you write something which corresponds? It's with not an easy answer. It's not an easy yes or no. It is. It's not an easy answer. Like, what are you talking about, you idiot? We cannot write the Quran. We don't have it. You see, if Yasser Kadri, maybe many people do not understand until now what happened. What happened, he just admitted that they don't have a preserved Quran. This is why he cannot give an e this, this is not an easy answer. I cannot write it down again. It cannot be written. We don't have it. Otherwise, he should say, sure, we can write it. We have the Quran. Hey, give me an uh, empty paper now. I will write exactly what is in my head as an example, and it's going to be the same Quran. He refused to say, yes, we can do that. It is not an easy answer. With no human interference, would you write something which corresponds? It's with... not an easy answer. It's not an easy yes or no. It is enough for the Muslim to believe that the I think Quran this should be an Quran. easy yes or no, though. Yes, Al Khadi. I, I have to. And look and look at the Mimi, uh, sorry, uh, video editor. And it uh, should be a yes or no. Should be a yes or no. He's telling him what to say. He's trying. You know, if Yasser Kadri was sitting next to Mimi Hijab, Mimi Hijab would step in his, in his shoes. He will step in his foot, he eat it. What are you doing? You should say yes. So Mimi Hijab, okay, sorry, the video editor, he was expecting the guy to understand the trick. Okay, you said something before. Can we fix it now? If we give you a black book, a blank book, and we say write the Quran, you can do it, right? He was not expecting him to say no. So he wanted to fix it, he made it blind. And now he is telling him what to say. It should, it should be easy. It should be easy. But by pushing it, he got himself more in the corner. Corresponding. It's not an easy answer. It's not an easy yes or no. It is enough for the Muslim to believe that the I Quran think this should is be an easy yes or no, though. It should yes be. I, I have to. 
Okay. Very, very and look, suddenly he's not calling him Dr. Yasi Kadri. Suddenly he is calling him Yasser Kadri. What happened to Doctor? What happened to Sheikh? Mimi Hijab, uh, sorry, previously Mimi Hijab, the video editor. Now he is disrespecting his master, the one who have tons of interview asking him what to do as a Muslim, and now he is calling him by his name and saying to him, it should be easy answer, it should be yes or no. And the guy, he says to him, very well. So, yeah, Muhammad, after we get off this phone call, me and you, let's have a number of discussions. No problem. I'm Why you want to do it now? Because people will laugh at us. So imagine what will happen in the back door conversation. Why this conversation cannot be for all Muslims? What kind of religion? It's not for everybody. Why we need to discuss behind doors? Is it a secret? Yes, it is a secret. It's embarrassing. You see, the second you start hiding things, it means there's something wrong. Uh, wrong. Even if it's not wrong, by the way, it, there's a, some, some, some kind of shame. Like, as an example, a man and a, and, a, and a wife, they do sleep together, right? It's not wrong, but it's a shame to expose yourself to the public, right? So, even if the act is not wrong, they, you hide when it is shame to be in public. Like, being naked inside your house is not wrong. But being naked outside, outside the house is wrong. It's a shame. So when you decide to say, wait, let us bring it inside the door. We cannot have it in the street. This means there's something shameful and you are trying to hide. There's nakedness. You don't want to expose your aura, your private part. And this is the Quran. The Quran is a private part. So let us not to go there and the stupid Mimi, oh sorry, video editor, previously known as Mimi Hijab, he keep insisting, and the more he insists, the more he goes stupid. Yes, sir, admitted that the word of the Quran is created. No, all the Muslims agree in that. You know, if you if you are a, if you are a Muslim, you agree that Quran is created. They will kill you. One of the the caliphate, he slaughtered a man in the Eid, in the you know in the holiday, in the mosque like a sheep. Why? Because he is a sheikh. Because he said the Quran is created. So until now, all Muslims agree that if somebody says the Quran is created, he should be killed. It's like saying Muhammad is the prophet. This is how big it is. So for sure, you have to admit that this is not the question. All of them they agree. And here you you, you find another stupid thing. So how the Quran is created? Yet, yet it's it's from Allah. So how you say it's from Allah is if it's not created by Allah. I mean, how does this, how this is work? If I, if you, if you come to me and you say this, uh, this table is uh, um, from China, but it's not made in China. Okay, is it imported? Uh, no, it's not created. Okay, so China did not create this table. Where this table is coming from? This is why he says there's holes, holes. This is all is holes. How in the world you come with such... I mean, this religion is the most stupid religion. Islam looks so stupid because it's a mix of many religions. Some from the Hindus, black stones, the vagina, and sexual stuff. Some from the Sabian, some from the Christians, some from the Jews. And then they put it all in a mixer. And then we come with a religion nobody understands, including the Muslims. So, in one hand, they will say to you that Allah is not created. The Quran is not created. So now we have two Allah. Very yeah. open with advanced students. <clears throat> but these issues should not... Look, it is Kalamullah, what is going to be written. It is Kalamullah. What, it is what, what, what would you write? Uh, 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 let's you not... Let, let's, you, you're pushing me. And I'm saying it's not hikmah to... Listen, I have a condition. Like I said, everything I say is going to be factual. If I wanted to do Tawriya and whatnot, I would do it right now in front of you. There is no need for Tawriya. He said, if I want to do Tawriya, if I want to do hide the stuff, this is Islamic practice, by the way. When two Muslims are debating, and they don't want to be saying something will be used against them in the debate, they do Tawriya. Or let us say they have an argument. So they hide some truth in order to pass the point. 
So we do Tawriya, same as Taqiyya. We hide it. This is Tawriya, you know, put it in the back. He will become apostate. No, this guy, he make a living from his business. I mean, what are you talking about? This guy, without being a Muslim, but what he will be? The Quran is the uncreated speech of Allah. The Quran is preserved. So hold on. You see, guys, it is any created speech. Okay, how it is a speech and it's not a created? I mean, what kind of philosophy this philosophy is? So Allah, he speak the Quran, but he have nothing to do with the Quran. Because when you say this Quran is not created by Allah, but Allah speak it, that's mean he is reading someone else words. And the question now will be, is the Quran exists by itself? Which means regardless if there's Allah or not, Quran is there. See this stupidity? Guys, give me a second. Just I want to get some water. My throat is dry <clears throat> because I was doing rubber music, as you know. <laughs> All right, this is better. Hmm. Yeah, always I do rap music. Are you kidding me? I make Quran too. You know, isn't it? Isn't it me who said, "In the year, uh, in the year of uh, of the spoon." Don't ask me what is the year of the spoon. I mean, it's the next year after the year of the fork. That Muhammad he used to eat by fork, and he enjoy his pork. And he says to the potato, this is was made as tomato. And then after he pray, he forget what to say. And then when he say, ask Allah, he say, I forgot to say, inshallah. And this is why he did not give me a baby. And this is why Muhammad uh, hijab became so greedy. Here we go, we have Quran. Yeah, I wish my English skill is good, otherwise it's making making rap is very easy for me. I can make Arabic poetry easy. But, uh, you know, English is not my first language, so I'm limited. But it's a stupid cult, my friend. So the Quran is the speech of Allah, but the Quran is not created by Allah. Solve it. Do we have any Muslim here he can solve this, this madness? Yeah, TP, I'm a very good rapper. Actually, they offer me. You know, actually, you know what? Once I wanted to get a job, and me and Prophet Muhammad, we apply. Muhammad was accepted because he's very good looking, he's white. You know, according to Muslims, he's very white. I'm not. Uh, so he, they accept him to do striptease in the blind women club. Prophet Muhammad, he went in the stage, and those blind women, they went so crazy about how handsome he is. For me, they said to me, you can do rubber music in the front of the place, you know, the strategic clip of Allah, and you can make a strategy about it. So, you know, like I used to go stand there and I, like I say, Allah will give you a, a, a let us say, hold on, a, 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 a palm tree, and that will be your private part. And you will not pay any fee to get that long, which is going to arrive to any part. Any part in the world is going to be in, uh, in what? Uh, 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 <clears throat> uh, uh, this is getting so sexual. Sorry, I can't continue. That's very that's so that's too much. Yeah, Prophet Muhammad, he worked. I mean, he's very handsome. He's very good looking, brother. Did you remember the the video about the guy? He's talking about a man. He was walking at night, and he saw the Prophet, and then he saw the moon, and then he looked at the moon, and then he looked at the Prophet, and he looked at the moon. And he look at the prophet and they look at the moon and the guy the sheikh when he's talking is like almost crying and he look at the moon and he look at the prophet and he look at the moon and he look at the prophet and he look at the moon and he look at the prophet and the prophet face is more white than the moon what so yes the prophet was accepted his first job is to do striptease for khadija a woman she cannot see and he was she see him very handsome you yeah. know uh, you know, you know the story of Muhammad, by the way, when he uh, uh, when he saw first time the angel in his room, 
Who, who remember it? Who remember it? You guys are supposed to go like for 20 minutes, 15 minutes. What you did to me? Unbelievable. Thank God I'm not married. Otherwise, I would get killed by by high heels shoes. Women, by the way, they are very dangerous, by the way. This is why, if you remember in the Quran, Muhammad, he had fight with his two wives, Hafsa and Aisha. And because they are dangerous for that. Uh, <clears throat> Muhammad, he needed help. Anyone remember which chapter we are talking about? And then, this is chapter 66. And then Allah, he said in this chapter, if you too turn in repentance to him, your heart are indeed so inclined. But if you back each other, okay, what will happen? Against him, against him who? Muhammad. Truly Allah is his protector. And Jibreel. And every righteous one among those who believe. And furthermore, all the angels. I mean, look at this army, man. Against two women because they have high heels and long, long, long nails. I'm telling you, women are dangerous. Look, Muhammad, he cannot fight those two short women. He needed to do what he needed. Did he, like, look at this. Look at the support he will get. Like, we, 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 we. Allah send him Jibreel. Don't worry, we are coming. We're prophet. The prophet was in the bedroom fighting with his wives. And then suddenly Allah, he sent him this warning. Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad. Say to your wife, your wife, your wife, your wife, if you too turn in repentance to him, to him, to him, your heart, heart indeed is inclined. But if you back it up, each other, each other, each other, against him, 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 truly Allah is his protector, 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 protector. May Allah protect you. I mean, we need Allah. Is Allah is enough? No. We need more support. I mean, Allah alone is not enough. Especially he did not go to the gym for a long time because of Corona. So Allah will join the fight, but Allah is enough? No. Truly Allah is his protector. Okay, are we done? No. And Jibreel, like Jibreel is joining, uh, Jibreel, come in. Jibreel, where is Jibreel? Uh, Jibreel is getting his short. Huh? Uh, Jibreel, by the way, he have a karaoke. He play karaoke. And every righteous, here we go, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Mujahideen, al zarqawi Osama bin Laden are coming to support the Prophet against his two wives. It's a big war. And all those believe. And furthermore, we are done. No, we are not done. It's not enough. Those dangerous women, I'm telling you, women are dangerous, my friend. Are you telling me you are still single? I mean, look what happened to Muhammad with two women. I mean, this is, and the funny day, the, uh, the Muslim, they say that George Bernard Shaw said in one of his books that if the prophet was exist today, he can solve all the problem in the morning while he is drinking his coffee. Where we can find that in the books of Bernard Shaw? We cannot find it. It's a fabrication. So your prophet, he can solve all the problems in the morning while drinking his coffee to the point he could not solve a problem inside the house and he needed the support of Allah and Jibreel and every righteous Muslim and furthermore all the angels. Do you see it? <clears throat> if you are single, still single man. Take my advice. Look what happened to Muhammad. The guy went crazy. Literally, he went crazy. Actually, even the hadith says, look at this. Muhammad, he was, I don't know what they call it in English. Help me, guys. My English is funny, as you know. Very funny. You know, I like, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, once I say to American, hello, guys, they, they bounce me from the chat room. It turned that I was saying to them, hello, gays. You know, so my English is very funny. Sorry for that. Okay. Now, I need your help. When somebody, he have a phobia. Is it the phobia? I think we can say phobia, but something like phobia from women. What he do? He want to sleep with them, but he cannot. So look what happened. I'm just trying to explain my point, brother. If we go here, we will find what happened to Muhammad because of the phobia of women.
And you know, if you are a doctor or something, correct me, please. Please, not please. It says here, the prophet continued for such a such a period of time, imagining that he had sexual intercourse with his wives. But in fact, he did not. Muhammad, he had phobia from his wives. Because we don't know what they used to do to him in the bed. I mean, obviously, those women are crazy, man. This guy is a victim. I can imagine that Aisha, she grabbed him from his hair. Hafsa, she grabbed him from his nipples. And they drag him to the bed. And the guy, he didn't want to have sex. And they force him into sexual temptation. Actually, he made a verse in the Quran. If you read my book, Sex and Allah, you will see it says, uh, talking about the, the private part when it's standing up. Not for the anthem, for sure. بدك ضلك عزابي تتخلص من عزابي أميلة she is singing for me in Arabic <laughs> I will tell your mom about what you said why you want me to stay single okay you want you don't want what happened to Muhammad to happen to me huh okay now listen what kind of a prophet I wish Yasser Kadri can answer us about this because he he, he will say uh, please not don't go there brother it's not wise to speak about this topic a prophet of God protected by Allah, he was bewitched, according to Muslims. And he imagined himself having sex, but in fact, he did not. Why? What happened? Any Muslim can tell us? See, this timing is not good for you guys, huh? Only 541 people here. What happened? Well, next time before we start live, in this time, because obviously this time is not good for many, uh, I'm going to do promotion. I will offer one flight ticket, one-way ticket, vacation to Afghanistan. And you will see how many people will be here, especially Muslims. Many Muslims can tell us what's happening here. If the Prophet, even his sex was an illusion, so how we can trust him that he was seeing angels? This guy, he was having sex with who? When he imagined himself having sex. Because he was having sex, but with who? Because this is not about him sleeping, by the way. Because you might think, says, imagining. So you think he was sleeping. This is not about sleeping time. <clears throat> You cannot leave the pillows around Muhammad. God knows what they what they have in them. Anyone have any comment from the Muhammadan? How many of you did download the videos previous to this? I'm going to delete it right away. So if you did not delete it, did not download it, please take it, download it and post it in your channel. All right. I have to take as a class, yeah, I have to, I know. We need, uh, I need to first to take a class to learn Arabic, because Muslims, they say, I do not know Arabic. And the funny, all of them didn't know Arabic. I mean, his, it's starting from his prophet. And, and by the way, you see, just to show you the stupidity of this card. Let me show you something. Chapter 2, verse number 78, it says that those who do not know the book are illiterate. Does it say that? Take a note. Chapter 2, verse number 78, says the Quran says, those who do not know the book, book of what? Book of God, which means they are pagan. They are illiterate. So the word ummi in Arabic is about those who they are pagan. And Muhammad in the Quran described as Ummi. What Ummi mean? The book in front, the Quran in front of you. They know not the book. That what Ummi mean. 
if you change the translation, if you don't like this translation, which is funny, by the way, translation is not good, but you can change it. Maybe we can make it more clear. Because speaking about illiterate, so the illiterate people who know not the book. So who is the illiterate in, the, in Islam? Is the one who do not know the book. And the funny, the Quran call us people of the book. Did you notice? So how the Muslims are asking us to go and learn and their book, stupid book, calling us people of the book. While they are called Ummiyin, which means ignorant, illiterate. They do not know the book. Until now, the Muslims, they call us the people of the book. In chapter 3, verse number 20, and here you will see the stupidity of those who try to explain Islam and say to you, Muhammad do not know how to read. The Quran never spoke about Muhammad do not know how to read. The Quran speak about Muhammad being pagan. He is illiterate about the book. He do not know the book. Read carefully. So if they dispute with thee, say, I have surrendered my will to, to Allah. This is what Islam means. Surrender, not submission. And whoever follow me and say those who have been given the book. Have you surrendered? And then those who've been given the book and those who they are illiterate, have you surrender? So the Quran divide mankind to two, people of the book, this is us, and people who they are pagan. Chapter three, verse number 75, it says, and the people of the book says, or some of them, you can trust them with a lot of money and they will restore it. And some of them, they don't. And then he says, some of them say, there are no way over us as the common people. They speak falsehood. Actually, translation is bad. It says here, Laysa alayna fil It's not important for us to speak with those ignorant. Who is the ignorant? The pagan Muslims. But this verse here is saying that those who they are people of the book, they make fun of the Muslims for they are ummiyin, they are pagan. Change the translation. You will see right away how, how everything changed. Let us go. Uh, you see? See here how the word disappears suddenly in the other translation? And look between two brackets, they say the illiterate and they put the word Arab. But that would be stupid to say. Because that means all the Arab are illiterate. And that can't be true. Well, isn't it the Arab Christians are Arab too? But you call them people of the book. So here they say the people of the book, and those are the Jews and the Christians. And the funny, the Muslim, they keep saying to us, your book is corrupted. Yet, So why the Quran call us people of the book if we don't have the book? Here you see the stupidity is double. Because if somebody, let us say a guy, he used to have a car, and now he don't have a car. You call him the guy with the car? How stupid are you? So they call us people of the book until now, but they claim we don't have a book, so why you call us people of the book? In the top of that, the verse confirm that we are people of the book, and they are, all of them, the Muslims, are the illiterate. And here they add in a word between two brackets, the Arab. Well, yes, the Arab, but those are the one, the pagan, who like Muhammad, not all the Arab, not the Arab Christians. And same, tons of examples like this in the Quran. Do we have any Muslim have any comment? <clears throat> any Muhammadan? Anyone? Any Muhammadan? Nothing? All right, guys, I think we have enough for today. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you, if you like it. And uh, remember, I don't keep my videos in my channel, so I take them right away off 
I will keep this one maybe for a few hours. The one before it, I will take it off immediately. So if you did not download, download a copy of it right away. Before we take it, after I finish right away here, I'm going to click delete and it's going to be gone. So uh, download your copy, share it. And those, I, I heard some of those who they are downloading my videos, they are flagging other Christians for copying the videos, claiming that this is their own. And why? Maybe because he just added a translation. Shame on you to do that. That's mean you are doing business. And if you are doing a business and you think you can flag somebody because you added a translation, subtitle to the video, I will flag you. We gave it to you for free. And what we do here is for free. If you are willing voluntarily to add subtitle to a video, then every Christian should have the right to download that video if you claim to be Christian. Otherwise, obviously, you are making a business. So if anyone, he claims to be Christian, he have a Christian YouTube, you download his video, which is my video. I don't care about other videos because that's not my business. And he flag you for copyright. Take a screenshot, send it to me, and I will flag his videos, and I will warn everybody about this channel. We don't want hypocrites here. Either you are a Christian or you are not. If you are a Christian, you should not mind people copying the video and spread it all over. But if you are here to do business, maybe to get some click, to get some advertising, that is a different story. Like Muhammad Mimi Hijab. All right? So, I want to say thank you uh, for being here. I pray that the Lord will give you good health, all of you. And I pray that the Muslim, they will see the truth and the truth will set them free. We are not against the Muslims. We are against Islam. We are against liars who they are deceiving Muslims. Making them believe that they have religion. You don't have religion. You have nothing. Islam is a collection of cults. One from the east, one from the... Actually, even your God, he thinks there is two east and two west. Have you ever heard of a God? He says he is the Lord of the two east and the Lord of the two west. Why? Because Muhammad, he saw that there is the sun set in two different locations, one in the winter and one in the summer. So he thought there is two lords, two, 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 two east and two west. How that can be? For this is a silly, uneducated man. Claiming something he don't have. And the more he talk, the more he do poo, poo as usual. So I hope uh, to see you all soon. And may the Lord, the Messiah, keep you all safe from all illness, corona, diseases, violence, uh, 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 finance problems may the Lord uh, uh, you know take care of us and remember always don't depend on yourself those who depend on themselves they are lonely you work the Lord he says go work the Lord he says do and I will do with you work and I will work with you but don't be alone this is the difference between a believer and disbeliever a believer he is not alone and will never be even when you are dying you are not alone and that alone will give you an amazing comfort in your heart in your mind all of us we have a stress don't think that somebody in this earth don't have a stress don't think if you are poor that's mean the rich he have no stress and you don't you, you do the stress is a change or changing depending on who you are where are you a human being always is not satisfied. God, he put him in heaven, he is not satisfied. He gave him literally heaven. He doesn't do anything except being with his wife, eating fruits and nice food. Still, he is not satisfied. He wants more. So what happened to us every day, it would happen to Adam every day. Adam in heaven was stressed. He wants more. 
unhappy. Don't be Adam, the unhappy person who was in heaven. For God, he gave you a lot of a blessing in your life. Today, as we speak, you will find out how many blessing you have around you. If you are poor and you have a child, that's amazing, beautiful. It's a gift from God. If you have a roof in the top of you, that is a blessing from God. There's people, they are sleeping in the street, literally. If you have a piece of bread in your table, that is a blessing from the Lord. There's people, they dream to have it. If you are free, that is amazing blessing from the Lord. There's a lot of people, they are sex slaves. How disgusting. So my friend, you know, rejoice and appreciate. For those who don't appreciate, what they have will be taken from them. And what you have is a priceless, even though maybe you don't see it. A tooth in your mouth is a priceless. You will not see how priceless it is until you have pain or until you lose it and then you speak like Muhammad without teeth. The eyes you have is a priceless. You will not know how priceless it is until you become blind. And there's many are blind. So let us appreciate and learn appreciation for this is the key of happiness. We appreciate the Lord and we say to the Lord, thank you. I appreciate you and I appreciate you bringing all those people to me, to listen to me. I appreciate every single one who I was helping because by helping him, I'm helping myself. For the Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. So our fruits is our identity, not our names. This is how the Lord will recognize you. And the first fruit you should always have with you is appreciation. A person don't appreciate, he don't deserve to be with the Lord. For he appreciate not what the Lord gave him. Even if you are sick, you appreciate. And time will tell you what we are talking about. Happiness is between your hands. But sadly, we don't want it. We regret it. We don't appreciate it because we want just more and more never stop. The one who have a donkey, he want a horse. And the one who have a horse, he want a car. And the one who have a car, he want to have a limousine, and the one have a limousine, he want to have an airplane, and the one have an airplane, he want to go to the space. And then after you go to the space where you want to go, you want to go more. That is the nature of the human being. Don't be that person, for you will be unhappy all your life. You will be jealous from people who they have more than you have. Unhappy again. A person who appreciate, he have a treasure. Nobody have. For he is happy with what he has. Appreciate having a husband, he loves you. Appreciate a wife, she take all the stupid things you do. Appreciate the children, who they are the gift of God given to you. Appreciate a piece of bread. For not everybody have it. Thank you all, and may the Lord bless us and help us to understand better, to see better, and to take our blindness away and give us the vision to be wise, smart, diligent, uh, vi sorry, vigilant, excuse my funny English, and to be fruits. And the fruits should be delicious. And this is who we are. Thank you. God bless you.